Well, this should be interesting. <laughs> Uh-oh, we're having a delivery traffic jam happening right now. Woo! <laughs> Just like... Good job. Thank you. Hey, Asher. It's way too muddy outside. Yeah. <laughs> What'd he say? He said, what's this stuff for? I said, it's for a greenhouse. I said, a new one. A big one. He goes, oh, a fat one? Yeah, a fat one. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna grow a lot of stuff in that greenhouse, huh? Like in this big Yeah. Look at that. What do you think, Bear? You gotta stay up for just a little bit longer. There's one more person coming. In case you aren't already aware, this is our high tunnel from Growers Solutions, which just arrived. Just in time for us to be at home for the next few weeks. Uh, where we can get this thing set up soon and start growing a lot of food. Well guys, you changed my mind on something. I actually love when you tell me things like gardening tips um, and things, especially when I'm doing something that I'm, I've never done before. And many of you told me that my hydrangeas would probably bloom better in a place where they got some afternoon shade. So we made these two circle beds we were gonna put the hydrangeas in the middle of, and I'm actually gonna put my shrub David Austin roses in these circle beds. And I'm gonna put the hydrangeas down on that side of the garden because that's where the water runs down to more so they'll be more hydrated and it gets the afternoon shade from the woods. Um, and so I think we'll get a prettier show of the flowers down there. So yeah, you guys definitely influenced um, this garden. I love that. That makes it just even more special to me. Uh, that I get to share the process of putting this in. We had talked about the possibility of putting this all in and then kind of revealing it and keeping it a secret for the fun of that. But I actually chose to share the step-by-step -step process with you guys because I knew your feedback would be so valuable. I mean, why plant a garden just on your own knowledge when you can plant it with the knowledge of many? And so um, we changed that. We actually were gonna stagger blackberry and blueberry bushes and we're actually separating them, blackberry, or and raspberry um, because you guys stated how they didn't need to be planted right next to each other. Uh, there have been a couple of things that you've shared that were like, okay, well, we could just tweak uh, a little bit according to that information and make this better. And so that's what we're doing. And it's going to be so beautiful. I'm so thrilled about this space. There's the next delivery. He actually had to drive down and turn around to give time for the semi driver to uh, move out of the driveway. Fourteen yards of super soil, which is essentially broken down compost, and we get it at a place here locally. We have found a dump truck driver to deliver this, and essentially paying the fee for the dump truck driver was cheaper than renting a dump trailer and making multiple trips with a truck. Um, so we decided to go this route and um, yeah, so this is a lot of soil. This is going to amend all of the beds that we have in the raised bed garden, as well as top off all of the beds in the new high tunnel. Um, we haven't completely 100% decided exactly what we're doing as far as bed space in there. Uh, we're, we're having some cedar milled and we're gonna build some raised beds, but they're not gonna be super tall. We're just gonna get a little bit of soil up off the ground. You smelling that? <laughs> stuff. Yeah, that's it really good. They got their mix really well. You think it smells good? Yeah. It smells like the garden, huh? Mm -hmm. it smells like springtime. Plants mm. that grow leaf. Oh, look at those bees looking happy. Are you smelling the garlic? That garlic is looking good. Jeremiah just actually corrected me. I thought it was 14 yards. It's actually 20 yards. So uh, 14 is what we had decided the base minimum was, but 
I guess he decided when talking to the dump truck driver to go ahead and make sure we weren't gonna need a second a second round. Hey mister. Hey mister handsome. Look at those eyes. Come on, let's go see the baby goats. Um we I had to get a smaller tub because they can't drink out of the other trough. They're too short. Gretchen, what are you thinking, baby girl? Hey, little guy. This has always been the place where the baby, baby goats hang out. They like to get under here where they can be away from the Mommy. big goats. Oh, hello, sir. Hey, pretty. Look at these pretty blue eyes. So Jan is here, as you can see next to her mom. She's she's a little bit older baby, but she is the same size that Gretchen Wiener was whenever we got her. I call her Catty Cat. She's, she's a sweetheart, and her baby sure are cute. One of the things that I'm having to do today is figure out my milk stand situation because I have all standard size goats. And so these little guys, girls, these little girls, they uh, can't, they can't fit on my uh, milk stand. Their heads are too short to get in and eat the grain. So we're either gonna have to rig something up or possibly build another stand quickly so that we can milk. Uh, the two of the mamas, their babies are really too young to separate them at night anyway. So I have a little bit of time, but I wanna start feeding them on there so that I can get them accustomed to it. But Regina, her baby's a little bit older, and so it's, it's about time to start uh, milking her. So watching these little dudes is super fun. Oh yeah, it is super fun. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that Maya was suggesting was just bringing them in here and seeing how they do on this milk stand. If it doesn't fit, maybe if there's a way that we could alter it instead of completely rebuilding it. Because one of the things we're dealing with right now is the fact that we are staying home. Uh, there have not been enforced legal quarantines here in Arkansas yet. They have canceled school and uh, encouraged no gatherings over 10 people. So uh, we are just staying home as much as we can and we're able to do that. And so we just feel like that's something that we can do. Um, and we know that not everybody have that, has that option. So we're just gonna go ahead and, and quarantine ourselves. This room is really dirty though. I literally have not stepped foot in here since we were milking last year. It's later in the day. Benjamin and I are headed back out. We're gonna go over and check on our big goaties because I don't want them to feel neglected since the new herd is here. Someone asked if um, my new goats were getting along with my old goats and they're not together. Uh, right now we have the Nigerian dwarf herd in this yard right next to our house and we have the other goat herd over here with the female alpacas where they have the big uh, two and a half acre pasture and then the yard around the house next door and they have a barn over here. So, oh, thank you. Sweet boy you are. <laughs> you know, we can actually dry these and put them in some oil and make dandelion salve. Wouldn't that be nice? Did you know you can also eat these? Huh? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you put them in your mouth and chew. It's actually the greens that people usually eat. It's dandelion greens, you can make a salad. Oh, Benjamin, if I go in with these flowers, the girls are gonna eat them. Set them over here where they're safe. I'm gonna put them on top of this hay. Oh, goodness. This day's just full of surprises. What are you doing in there, Gary Cat? What are you doing, silly boy? Did I, oh, goodness. Did I ruin your nap? <laughs> Most of my uh, goat purchases, I feel like have worked out pretty well. Oh. This is Miriam. She was a total impulse goat buy. Miriam, I was actually selling chickens at a local market uh, that I had I had hatched and I someone walked Miriam by on a leash. She was about five months old and I just had to have her. She was so pretty. And uh, I called Jeremiah and he said, well, if you sell enough chickens, you can buy her. And I did. I sold just enough to buy Miriam and I brought her home in the back of my minivan and she pooped in the cup holder and the kids yeah. still tell the story. I guess I do too, huh, Miriam? Then, of course, Anna and Clover. I don't know where Clover went. She was just here. 
she's probably eating hay but uh my little manchas that these two came from amy who was with me yesterday this is nestle now nestle and mayhem goodness are they my last two from those our first goat herd aside from maggie and miriam uh, jeremiah actually traded a job um, with a local goating family and they their kids grew up in 4-H and they had bred Nubians for a long time and he traded a job for a herd of goats. We got 10 goats for that uh, job and and we've sold them um, over the years. We've lost some and I'm just realizing that at this point Nestle and Mayhem are my last two goats from that original herd, which is really kind of sad to realize. And Mabel here, she is the daughter of one of those original goats. She's one that I'm thinking is bred. She's looking pretty wide. And then that's Ruth right here. And she's Nestle's daughter. Uh, we bred Nestle to Christopher Walken, who is a Sonnen. So Ruth should be a pretty good breeder. Hey, Tori girl. Oh, you don't want your close up? And then of course my newest girl before my, my little goats came is Winona right over here. She's a full La Mancha. Oh, there's Clover. She was eating. Clover's always eating. She's usually wherever the food is. Here she comes. So I actually have these tendos and then we went ahead and put Gretchen Wieners next door to meet her friends. And uh, she's doing good over there. So now we actually have uh, 15 girl goats. Uh, we have the 10 standard size does over here. All of these are breeding age. Um, some of them are bred or will be bred soon. And then right in the other yard we have the four Nigerian dwarf does. Uh, three of them are in milk and then Gretchen Wieners is, uh, she's never been bred, but she is old enough now. Once one of those bucks is old enough to breed her, we'll breed her. And then we have the little baby Nigerian dwarf, so she's not going to be bred for a year and a half. So we definitely have the potential for a lot of milk here, even if we were machine milking. That's way more time than I want to invest in getting goat's milk. Um, honestly, if I'm making um, kefir and cheese and yogurt and drinking, like we're just drinking milk, um, I would still probably have a hard time getting through over maybe a gallon to a gallon and a half a day. Um, that's making all of that stuff regularly for my whole household. Um, and you know, there are things like mozzarella cheese that make up, they take up a lot of milk. Like I can use a gallon of milk and make, um, a ball of mozzarella cheese about this big, which, you know, we can use that within one dinner for everybody. So, I mean, we could comfortably use about a gallon and a half a day on average throughout the week. And sometimes a little bit more, sometimes that's kind of hard to get through. Why then, you may ask, do we have this many goats? And uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I just really love them. I love their personality. Just they, they know you, they know their name. They can be so tame and so sweet. Some of them are a little wilder, they're a little more skittish. Um, Maggie here, she was my first goat. She's, um, I guess she's about five now. She's five years old. Got her as a bottle baby um, when I knew nothing about goats and just had beginner's luck, I guess, because that doesn't always go well. Come on, let's go take a look at the garden real quick. Come on. So I often get asked by people why we got goats instead of getting a cow. And for those of you who have been here with us for the last couple of years, uh, you may know this a little bit better but our property has really changed since we started out on the homesteading adventure um for one jeremiah's sister bought the house next door which gave us three more acres to work with his mom lived there until she passed away and it's been empty his brother is about to uh, move in there he's been over there working on it uh, but we're still going to have that land to farm so when we started out we only had four acres and only two of it was cleared there and that's where the house was in these yards uh, the rest of it was completely wooded and so we really didn't have the space for a cow um, we might could have worked it out maybe doing some rotational grazing but we just didn't feel like that would really be the best for the cow uh, the other thing is is that whenever my boys were all little they had really severe um, 
allergies to cow's milk and a lot of people who have a milk protein sensitivity and have a hard time with cow's milk they do fine with goat's milk so that was really what led us to it i mean we got goats because my kids could drink goat's milk and they couldn't drink cow's milk plus the space issue and now that we have the pasture next door uh, we've begun you know clearing out the woods we've downsized some of the other things that we're doing and we could probably thank you so much for coming up and putting your hand on me and waiting that's so polite thank you can i help you with something um um why are they moving the wagon around huh why are they moving the wagon around why are they moving that wagon around they're just moving it with the rock so leave it alone okay it's got rocks in it it, it kind of started out out of necessity and now we could probably support a cow with some really strict rotational grazing and we've talked about the possibility of getting something like a mini jersey we would have to really cut down our goat herd to do that uh, i mean we wouldn't need the goats if we had a, uh, had a cow but i really like them um i really really like goats and we like their milk but you, if you drink it while it's fresh it's really not weird uh, you, it does start to taste a little bit like kind of got that tang that goat cheese has after like a week or so you can really taste that a little bit more but uh, we like it and so for right now they really are the right homestead dairy animal for us and that could change in the future but I um, I'm very happy with them I'm glad that we have them obviously just went and got eight more so I know this is a little bit scattered um, it's evening and i'm out here uh, i got dinner in the instant pot and i ended up with about a tray and a half of brassicas that i hadn't planted yet because i thought i was going to give them to a friend of mine but i don't know if i'm going to see her um in the next couple weeks and then there will be no sense in planting them here at that point because it'll be far too warm but um so we're we're just going to go ahead and stick them in our garden and benjamin's helping me <laughs> and I'm telling you what guys raising children in the garden is hard work sometimes um, sometimes you have to uh, let them do things let them make mistakes but at some point you'll have 15 minutes until dinner is ready and a tray and a half of brassicas that you need to put in the ground and your kid will actually be helping you get it done quickly I heard mom. yeah i heard that cow too where is he he's across the street get the purple cabbages you need eight of them for these holes right here okay what i i pulled it out mom look i pulled it out with oh wow, that's perfect well done i pulled it out with, and it just comes out with the name that's great. Put them in there. I'll put that one. A big cabbage. Let's start. Mom, I need the shovel to bury this. We'll put them all in and then bury them all at the same time. Oh. All right. Our brassicas are all in. The ones that are going in are in. I think I probably will go ahead and direct sow some more beets because I have the multi-sown beets that I, I sowed in clusters and started. And those are great because soon I'll be able to harvest the greens off of those um, because uh, they'll, they'll produce some greens and you can harvest some of those and then still harvest roots later. Uh, so I've got those in and they're looking really good but i think i may go ahead and sow some more beets um they start to, to have a little harder time when it gets really hot but we should be able to get one round in if i direct sow them now and uh, probably some turnips and some other you know good uh substantial root vegetables i've got a lot of carrots in i'll probably put some more radishes in radishes turn over really fast so it's a good way to get food going quickly uh, but yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about what we've currently got in our beds. Here's those multi-sown beets. So it's like three or four in a place and they're about 12 inches apart here and they'll grow in a cluster. Well, we can actually move forward out here uh, with the spring garden because we have our massive pile of soil now. So we can start amending our beds 
and uh, we'll be ready to put the spring stuff here in the next like two weeks or so. We're full swing into spring. Milking goats, well, we will be tomorrow after I can get a stand built and uh, plant in the garden. Feels good. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time. Playing basketball with Jack. Yeah. My first boy and my last boy. <laughs> I love you guys. Love you.